The Baja California Peninsula has become an RV and van life mecca. Each winter, thousands of vans, RVs, fifth wheels, and overlanders venture south of the border to experience Baja's stunning natural beauty, endless beaches, delicious food, and diverse outdoor activities. As experienced RVers who have spent nearly a year driving across mainland Mexico, we knew a road trip down the Baja Peninsula would be an emotional roller coaster full of highs and lows. But we had no idea just how amazing this trip would end up being. I can't believe I got to see that. Over the next two hours, we're taking you with us as we road trip Baja, driving over 2,200 miles from February to May 2023 in our Class C RV, Dita. As you'll see, this trip isn't always easy. There's cars everywhere. It is madness. But it's definitely worth it. If you want to follow along in our footsteps and RV to Baja, make sure to grab our 75-page digital guide. This downloadable guide shares everything you need to know about taking a van or RV trip to Baja, Mexico, including how to prepare your vehicle, what to bring, safety, driving, camping spots, foods to try, and how to stay connected. Plus, you'll have access to our personal travel map with over 200 pins of places to visit across Mexico. Grab your copy by using the link in the description below. Now buckle up and hold on as we take you with us on the road trip of a lifetime, RVing the Baja California Peninsula. It is officially crossing day. We are crossing at Tijuana, which is the most heavily trafficked border crossing in the entire world. Other options for crossing if you're coming into Baja is Tecate, which is like a much sleepier, quieter border crossing, as well as Mexicali, which is really popular for van lifers and RVers. Hopefully the border crossing at Tijuana is super smooth. I think it's coming back into the United States where the lines can be like super, super hour long waits. But I think getting into Mexico should be easy peasy. He's coming on. Okay. Princess, you ready for Mexico? crossing here we come all of the cars are just pretty much passing through but he told us to go to the right where all the buses are this is very nerve-wracking i hate border crossings dude checking our registration and our passport oh <sighs> stomach is a nut it's so like official and, and intrusive yeah he's coming on okay yeah It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Whew. We are through. Good night. Whoa. No bragging. <laughs> no sh. But yeah, they totally sent us through what they're sending commuter buses with tons of passengers. Next up is our FMM. So we're going to go into the immigration office to get our tourist permit. You are illegal if you are traveling in Mexico and have not gotten your FMM stamped. They give them up for up to 60 days as a tourist. They only have them at the border crossing. So this is definitely something you want to make sure you do. It's right off to the right after crossing the border. We made it! Google has already rerouted us through the Centro to avoid, uh, I guess, a Slow slowdown. Down we should have just gotten straight on Highway 1D, which will take you down to Ensenada and Rosarito. But no, we're stuck in, in downtown Tijuana traffic. Yay! Just avoid Centros and downtowns like at all costs when you're in an RV because even if the roads are wide enough to feel comfortable, they're so busy and everyone's in such a hurry that it's gonna be a nightmare. It's also a good idea to always check Google Maps before you actually start mapping. So this one said we were eventually gonna get on Highway D, but we didn't see that it was gonna send us through downtown first. So always double, double, triple check your Google Maps. Ooh, look at the border. It's very much indeed a wall. First toll, and we got charged the camion price, which is larger than a car, not quite a bus. Make sure to keep your toll receipts because there is something called the Green Angels that will give you assistance if you are on any of the toll roads and break down or you need help. You can call the number on the back of your toll receipt 
Tolls are cash or pesos only, so it's important to have pesos before crossing the border. If all this information is so much, make sure to check out our RVing to Mexico guide that we have. It's over 70 pages and it gives you absolutely everything you need to know about RVing to Mexico or coming here in a van, things like a border crossing checklist, what to bring with you, how to prepare, because there's also different things that you need if you're going to mainland Mexico versus crossing into Baja. Um, and we explain all of the differences and things like that in our guides. I feel so much calmer now that we're out of the central. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I do feel a lot better now that we're not in the border and downtown. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. The road is super nice, super smooth, just as good as any American highway. I'm making a pit stop in Rosarito so that we can stock up on some groceries. So you're supposed to cross the border with like no meats, vegetables, fruits, eggs, things like that. They didn't check at all when we crossed the border, so we totally could have done it, but you're not supposed to. So yeah, we're completely out of everything. So we're just going to our first little frutaria. There are big grocery stores that you can stock up on, but I like coming to these local spots because you're getting fresher produce. It's often much cheaper. Fill everything up, put it in a basket. And there you go, they had chicken, eggs, all of the fruits and vegetables you could want. This place is organic. They source all of their food from like sustainable grass-fed farms and things like that. I even found chicken and chorizo. I just filled up two huge bags and it cost us 782 pesos. This is one of the things I've missed about Mexico. You can get such good quality produce for so cheap. Always hustling. We're about to have lobsters at Las Brisas, which is like a famous restaurant known for their langostas, so their lobsters here. These are massive. I can't wait, this looks so amazing. These are caught fresh, just off the coast here. They have butter, rice, beans, and we're supposed to use flour tortillas to kind of like make it our own little taco. Don't light me up in the comments if I'm building this taco wrong. I asked, and I did not get a very, very decent explanation on how. I'm not a lobster fan, but that's pretty big. Fantastic meal all around. Highly recommend stopping there if you're looking for some mariscos after crossing the border. But now we are going to make the 43 minute drive to our final destination, which is El Valle RV Park in Valle de Guadalupe. Tope! Oh my God, look at the road. Make it. I don't know. Ooh. Okay. Holy. Whoa. I don't know, yo. Let's see what happens with this guy when he gets down here. Oh. <laughs> this is what we're going through. First river crossing. Who knew it was going to be in Valle de Guadalupe? Oh my god. <laughs> this just like looks so sketch, but. It's packed, so. We're just rocking. You are. A master. Seeing the RV rock back and forth is next level. Yeah, I'm so glad that we got a three inch lift kit and Fox off-road shocks all the way around because it is making wild road conditions so much more pleasant. This is a beautiful spot too. What a cool little RV park. The campground we're staying at is El Valle RV Park. It's right in the heart of Valle de Guadalupe. It has 15 amp electricity. There is a dump and water fill up here. They also have bathrooms and showers. They do offer like Airbnb style rentals here too. The road here, as you saw, was wild. Supposedly it rains like really heavy for a few days at once every year and it washes out all of the roads and then all of the roads get repaired, which is exactly what's happening right now. So he said next week the roads will be much better, but for now, whew, it was something. La Cocina Doña Estela is by far the most popular, well-known restaurant in all of Valle de Guadalupe. It was voted the best breakfast in all of the world in 2015, and it really just put it on the map. This place gets packed on the weekends. You can see anywhere from three to four hours wait for breakfast. So the very first place we are coming to during our time in Valle de Guadalupe is Doña Estela's. <laughs> and it's only a like five to seven minute walk from our RV park, so it's a perfect way to start our time. There's no one here right now. I literally have a dog's <laughs> nose in my crotch. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> hi, baby. What's up, puppy? We're starting off with Cafe de Olla, which is a Mexican coffee, and they put lots of canela, which is uh, cinnamon in it. They also put the piloncillo, which is natural raw cane sugar. It's absolutely delicious. We haven't had this since Mexico City. So long. I'm excited. I'm gonna drink it before it gets cold. Oh, 
It won't get cold, I just annihilated my mouth. <laughs> we ended up getting their three specialties. Here they're known for their borrego, which is lamb. We ended up getting a gordita, which is like a breakfast specialty stuffed with lamb. We also got their hot cakes made from corn, and we got mashaca <laughs> con huevo, which is like a ground meat that they kind of like finely dice, and then they put it with scrambled eggs. It's normally served in the morning. I'm so excited, it's so cozy and warm in here. If you're right next to the kitchen, you can see them cooking, it's pretty cool. I hop eat your heart out. Like, <laughs> wow, they're so fluffy and soft. <laughs> so good. The elote or the corn in it makes it like a really sweet flavor to it naturally. Most people wouldn't think of like lamb or heavy meat for breakfast, but here in Mexico that's super common. <laughs> Oh my god. Is it good? Oh my god. That's the winner. That might be the best gordita we've ever had. We've had a lot of gorditas. What's your favorite? That's hard. <laughs> as far as like the way I usually eat breakfast, which is pork, 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 and more pork, the gordita is probably bam. Like number one, pancakes, mashaka. Mm. Some pets, puppy. <laughs> oh, give him some pets, please. Okay. We need pets over here. Stat. Oh, pets. pets. Oh, pets. Yeah. We're definitely back in Mexico. There's dogs everywhere. Most of them are so sweet. Noisy, but sweet. Noisy, but sweet, yeah. We're doing a wine tasting at Vinos Pijuan, which is a family owned vineyard here in Vida Guadalupe. And the grounds are breathtaking. This place is nice. Yeah. That's very beautiful. The wine tastings here start for three for around $15, or it goes up to $22.50 for five, which includes a digestivo. So we ended up doing the five, we're splitting it, because our plan is to go to a few vineyards today, so we don't want to get a little too tipsy. <laughs> but so far, the first one is delicious. They kept this one partially filtered because they wanted to keep a lot of the like aromatics of it, and if you filter the white wines too much, it loses a lot of that. So you can kind of see it has like cloudiness to it. Very nice green apple peel, maybe some sort of a, a citrus, like a limey hint, with tons of minerality. Winner, winner for the wine tasting is the Lenora. It was the first wine that they ever made. It's what started this vineyard. It is incredible. We will definitely be buying a bottle of this. We will have a blog post for all of our recommendations for the places that we eat, all of our favorite vineyards that we visit. Some of them may not show up in this vlog. So if you're interested and you're planning your own trip to Vida Guadalupe, definitely check that out. We'll have a link down below. Finish off our taste and they give you a digestivo. This one is the red vermouth. They use a little bit of the red wine, but they also use herbs from the garden. So something that the owner did here is replanted a lot of the native plants for Baja California, and they're using those as they're making their vermouth, which I think is amazing. And it's so aromatic. She said there's like sage in here, clove, cinnamon, Whoa. and a bunch of other herbs. I just can't remember them right now, but it is so good. And all from the property here. All from the property. That's How cool dope. is that? We loaded up. I'm ready for the next vineyard though. <laughs> Wine arrived in Baja California in the 1500s along with Spanish colonization, but it took roughly 200 years before the first grape vines were cultivated in this valley. Fast forward to the 1970s, nearly 270 years later, and Valle de Guadalupe finally begins to attract international attention as vina colas in the area begin to harvest awards. Over the last 10 years, the wine region has exploded and is now home to more than 120 wineries and growing. Today, Valle produces roughly 80% of all Mexican wines. Most vinicolas in the valley produce conventional wines that can easily compete with any other well-known region in the world. But what we think really makes Valle stand out is its love for natural winemaking. Valle's natural wines are very experimental with a focus on minimal intervention, meaning they do as little as possible during the winemaking process to allow the elemental flavor of the tierra, the land, to shine through. Using organically grown grapes, no additives like sulfites or clarifiers, little to no filtration, and natural fermentation with wild yeast from the vines themselves. The art of natural winemaking produces only 1% of all wines in the world. A vinicola that takes natural winemaking to the next level is La Finca Querodilla, the only biodynamic winery in all of Valle. Biodynamic winemaking takes an ethical, ecological, and spiritual approach to how the wine is cultivated and harvested while restoring soil diversity. Aside from having incredible wines and one of the best views in the valley, they also have a fully operational farm with organic produce and livestock. 
something we found most restaurants in Valle de Guadalupe are also proud to have. Yeah, we came to La Finca Altozano for dinner. I'm enjoying a delicious carajillo. We've already received and devoured our agua chile, which is some of the best agua chile I've had in the entire country. We ordered five dishes. I didn't expect the agua chile to be as large as it was when it hit the table, and now I'm nervous that we ordered too much. But you know what? It's not the first time. I am loving this weather right now. We are visiting Valle de Guadalupe in the beginning of February, so it's still very much winter everywhere else. And in the daytime, it is just perfect. The nights get really, really cold, so be prepared for that, but it is glorious right now. And we're at Las Nubes, and the views here are incredible. We're doing a degustación, a tasting for their classic wines, which is running us about 15 US dollars, I think. This is Sauvignon and Chardonnay blend. Okay. You said it has lots of notes of kiwi, lychee, crispiness, very fresh, pairs super well with seafood. I like they're doing a lot of unoaked whites around here because you get to actually taste more of the grape itself and more of the earth that it comes from. And I'll tell you what, man, I haven't had I haven't had a bad wine yet. Even the, the experimental like biodynamic stuff we had yesterday, some of that was funky because of the wild yeast fermentation that they were using, but at the same time, Still very delicious, so I'm impressed by Bayer de Guadalupe. Ooh, I like this one. Yeah? This is a buyer. A lot of these wines you can only find in the valley, and so it's so interesting to just taste all the differences from winery to winery. Everything's so experimental here, it's, it's really wonderful to see this like region up and coming. I feel like in 20 years it's gonna be a completely different place even more than it's changed in the last five, which is crazy. This is a winner, this is a winner. You gotta come to Las Nubes for the views and their wines were fantastic. Also a really good price point. A lot of the other ones have kind of been higher end. So if you do wanna go home with some bottles, you're gonna be spending some money, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking for some more economic options, I think Las Nubes has it of all ranges. Once or twice a year, all of the people that live in the surrounding area of Valle de Guadalupe, they come here and they take their horses and they go into the campo and they have like a huge lunch, a huge feast together. There's lots of music, they're playing banda right now. And then they just come back later in the evening. It's just like one big fiesta for them. We get asked a lot, why RV Mexico? Is it worth the risk? Is it safe? All of the questions that often come up. The reason we RV Mexico is because you get to experience things like this. It is a completely different culture. They have different customs, practices, beliefs amazing food, it's just a different way of living and we appreciate that. We love the opportunity to get to learn and explore a new place like this. We know there's several wine country spots that we could visit in the United States, but that's not why to go to Lupe, that's not why we're here. We're here to experience Mexico. To give you guys kind of like a base of how Valle de Guadalupe works, there is a road that will take you all the way around pretty much in a loop. There are roads that connect between the two main highways, but they're dirt roads and the conditions of those vary dramatically from spot to spot. Right now, since we've had a lot of rain, a few of them have been completely impassable, so we've had to go all the way around, which takes quite a long time. So if you are coming here, I highly recommend having a car that is high clearance because some of these roads are crazy. We came to Anamilon for dinner tonight, which is the sister restaurant to Las Finca Altosana that we went to last night. They're literally right next door to each other. They have a sea urchin risotto. We have to get that. I've never heard anything like that. I think I'm gonna get the raviolis de langosta. Lobster raviolis with butternut squash cream. I'm so excited. <laughs> Good? Yeah. There's so many different flavors in it. It has like lots of acidity from like lime, but they made a peanut sauce with it. And there's pickled onion. There's some crushed up seaweed with peppers, I believe. It's fantastic. Mint, spinach. The hopped up hot chocolate. It's got bourbon, and a corn liqueur, vanilla, and milk. Mm. And it is banging. It's gonna go down so fast. <laughs> it's our last day in Valle de Guadalupe, and unfortunately, it is a very windy, day, quite chilly, but we are still making the most of it. We came to Troika Food Truck, which is right next to Vina Cava. It's one of the few vineyards here in Valle de Guadalupe that is doing traditional sparkling wine in the Cava style, which is from Spain. But it's perfect for like lunch. They do locally sourced small plates, all from their organic farm. We ordered three different dishes today, a mushroom rice with a little bit of fried sweet bread. We also got a crepe made with oxtail and bone marrow, roasted cabbage, Cabbage with a cauliflower puree, fresh kale, a little bit of apple, and then I put this like bacon glaze on top. And we also got a pork belly skewer with tzatziki. The views out here are gorgeous. You're overlooking the mountains. It's a shame it's kind of crazy weather today. The culinary scene in Valle de Guadalupe is incredible. If you are a foodie, you are in for a treat. 
just be prepared it is a more expensive place to visit it's definitely not on the cheaper side there are cheap options like Doña Estela's but most of the places are going to be similar to US prices it's worth it though. Vina Cava's vibe is amazing. I love that a lot of the vineyards here, the vinicolas, are like big and grand. It feels like this massive experience, but this one is really quaint and intimate. They reused and repurposed old boats for the roofs, which I think is so, so cool when you're like in a cave. It's a very small operation, but I highly recommend it. I think it could easily get overlooked by some of the bigger, shinier vineyards that are nearby. Come for the food, stay for the wine. <laughs> Today we are starting the long journey from Baja California to Baja California Sur. About a 10 to 14 hour drive depending on the path that you take. There is an older highway that runs along the Pacific Highway taking you through San Quentin, which is supposed to be a super amazing town for seafood. And then there is one that takes you down the Sea of Cortez, which is the path that we are going to be taking. Most van lifers or RVers just head straight for the south, either stopping in San Felipe or Puerto Citos and continuing on. So we're gonna push through. We have two very long days of driving, but I think it will be worth it. We have a a very fun activity waiting for us in Guerrero Negro. Today we're going to be driving to Puerto Citos, which is a super sleepy town, but it has aguas termales, hot springs. You know we like that. So I woke up not feeling very fantastic this morning. My stomach was super upset last night and I felt like I had a fever this morning. I'm just like not feeling my best. A lot of you have asked us how we deal with tummy troubles in Mexico because we never hope it'll happen, but it is a reality. And for me, it's happened like pretty much every time we've come to Mexico. The last time, it was our very first day. I got so sick. I was able to make it a week this time, but Dennis hasn't had any issues yet. So I think it really depends on your microbiome and how like strong and healthy those gut bacteria are. But we take a more holistic approach in dealing with our health. So a few of the products that have helped us with our tummy troubles. Activated charcoal is awesome. We also have digestive bitters. This is great for like if you're having bloating or gas pains. And then we also have slippery elm, which is a tea that you can make that also helps with upset stomachs. It puts like a slimy coating on the belly. So it kind of works similarly to Pepto-Bismol. But those are our recommendations. Definitely bring stuff with you. And if you really are having problems when you're here, you can always run to a pharmacy. Dennis is gonna pack up. Let's do this drive. Passed through our first checkpoint. These are very common throughout Mexico, but they just passed us through. Pásale, pásale. Yeah, that's actually kind of normal, but I don't want to set that as a standard because you never know if you're gonna get stopped, honestly. This drive is beautiful though. The mountains are absolutely breathtaking, very windy and narrow. Yeah. So be prepared for some white knuckle driving because you get really close to the semis when they pass. Nice. Uh, Puertocitos. Puertocito. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Gracias. We're here, Puerto Citos. We came here for the hot springs, but the wind is blowing so hard that I don't really feel like trying to find them. <laughs> Liz also feels like complete crap. And I think we're just going to not go outside. I'm not gonna set up the Starlink. Check the tide charts before you jump in the hot springs because apparently they're better at high tide because I guess they're extra hot. And if you don't have cool seawater in them, then they're almost impossible to get into. Anyhow, we're gonna reheat some leftovers and just chill. Good night. Still not feel good? No, still no feel good. I hope you feel better. So do I, thank you. No worries, five hour drive today. No pasa nada. <laughs> okay, this is where I'm staying for the drive for a little while. <laughs> Okay. Made it to Guerrero Negro. Today's drive was much faster than yesterday. It was pretty much just a straight shot down Highway 1 and Highway 5. 
instead of all the windy curves we saw yesterday. So it ended up being a pretty smooth drive today. I'm feeling a little bit better. I still feel pretty crummy and I still have a fever and my stomach definitely still hurts, but making the most of it and just trying to rest. I've taken like five naps today. Right now we went to an agua purificada because we need some fresh drinking water. Here in Baja, they are very familiar with just filling up your RV directly with a hose at any agua purificada. There's also five gallon Garifone jugs that you use for drinking water that we just kind of keep in the front of our RV. This was not the case in mainland. Going to an agua purificada was extremely difficult over there. So we just use tap water for most of the places to brush our teeth and shower and do all that stuff. But it's really nice that in Baja we can use the fresh water and it's super, super cheap. Apparently there's one place that you have to stop when you come to Guerrero Negro to get tacos. And that's Tacos El Muelle. Just barely made it here before they closed. Shrimp tacos were banging and they are like the crowd favorite, but I love the fish. The fish was banging. I'm usually a fish guy anyhow. He's building a little taqueria right next to where the food truck sits right now. So he said in like 10 months that should be open hopefully. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that is rad. Yeah. It's literally two blocks down the street from the Agua Purificada. So if you're in Guerrero Negro, definitely make this place a stop for lunch. Can't wait to crack over one of these bad boys at the beach. 85 pesos for a six pack of Dos Equis. That's pretty good. And she's pumping the jams, dude. She's got the Buenos dias. It has been two full days since you last saw me and I am feeling much, much better. We came to Guerrero Negro specifically to see the whales. And we're not just gonna see whales, we're gonna get to touch them. I am so excited right now and it's finally happening. We're on the boat and we're going out. We're gonna be able to kiss and touch and see whales. And we got lucky, the boat isn't completely full. Normally it can fit up to 30 people, but we only have about 12 people on. Room to spread out. Yes. Oh, I really can't wait. Every winter, thousands of gray whales travel over 5,000 miles from Alaska to Baja, California, making it the largest migration of any mammal in the world. The warm waters of Ojo de Libre Lagoon in Guerrero Negro, as well as San Ignacio Lagoon about an hour south, provide the perfect environment for the whales to mate and give birth. The nutrient-rich waters make for an ideal feeding ground for these gentle giants of the sea, which can weigh up to 40 tons and measure nearly 50 feet long. Gray whales are known for their playful behavior, frequently jumping out of the water and flipping their tails. They are very friendly with humans, often approaching boats to interact with visitors and receive pets, hugs, or even kisses. These lagoons are the only place in the world where you can interact with gray whales like this. The Mexican government has established regulations to protect the gray whale population and their habitat. Only licensed guides are permitted to captain the boats in the lagoon, and there are limitations on the number of boats that can be in the water at any given time. Oh, I just saw one's head pop up. <laughs> this is so cool. They're like waving to us. And they're starting to not just show their backs, but like their whole heads. Hello. Hello, whales. This is super cool. Each week, Guerrero Negro conducts a census to track the whale population in the lagoon. During our visit in early February 2023, it was estimated that there were 1,200 whales in Ojo de Libre Lagoon alone. During our two hour boat trip, we were able to touch at least five whales, and we must have seen 30. It was an incredible experience to interact with these massive and beautiful creatures so intimately. This is the best whale watching tour I've ever been on. It's not whale watching, it's whale experiencing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, normally on a whale tour, you're lucky if you get to see one, let alone touch it. Like, that's unimaginable. I think this is one of the best days of my life. I am not joking. Absolutely incredible. I touched a whale today. Yeah. This is one of those experiences that you'll remember for a lifetime. Absolutely must do in Mexico. 
even if you weren't planning a trip to Mexico, I would come just for this. There is a short window that the gray whales come to this area, so make sure that you're coming during whale season. Punta Mariscal Eco Tours, wow, wow, wow. I'm like touching a hand and touched a whale. Now we have to journey back into town so we can make our way to San Ignacio, which is our next destination. I'm not looking forward to the drive back, but. San Ignacio. How many days in San Ignacio? Uh, dos or tres, no sé. Days? days. Yes. Yeah. No wait. No what? No, no, no wait. No wait? Wait. <laughs> oh, no. no wait? Lo siento. Marihuana? Allá en America? In America? No, no marihuana? No. no. We just had our first bribery attempt. It's actually a military officer at a checkpoint. They said they wanted to come on and inspect the RV. Dennis knew instantly what was up. Then he saw us put the camera on the dashboard. He pulled out like a coin thing that had English on it saying, thank you for your cooperation. He was pretty much asking for a bribe and he kept going like this because he knew the camera was rolling. Uh. So I just played stupid and then said, yes, I can read it, but I don't understand. I don't understand, I don't understand. Finally, he got frustrated. He walked back over to the front of the RV and he told the other officer that we had a GoPro recording on the front, so they let us go. I definitely think it helps to have video recordings because you can have evidence of what they're doing. Do not pay bribery requests from police officers. It is illegal. Such a shame that this happens, but it is a part and a reality of our being here. Thankfully, we are pulling up to our RV park for the next few nights, which is in, under a gorgeous oasis in the desert. What an incredible spot to wake up to. This place is a dream. This is a dry camping spot we found in iOverlander, meaning there's no electricity or water, but they do have hot showers and bathrooms as well as a restaurant. But it's a great stopping point as you travel south. There's also a lot to do in the area. If you aren't able to see whales in Guerrero Negro, another option is coming to San Ignacio Lagoon. Also about 30 minutes from here is Sierra San Francisco, which has pictographs from the indigenous peoples that called Baja home before Spanish colonization. There were several tribes that lived throughout Baja and continue to call this place home. So it's definitely a piece of history we'd love to explore more, but for this trip, we are heading on. The two hour journey to Mulahe took us down Baja California's Highway 1, passing through Cuesta del Infierno, or in English, the highway to hell, a notoriously steep, windy, and narrow two mile stretch of road. We got a great spot at this RV park. I'm glad we got here when we did because she said that most of the spots will fill up, so we honestly got to walk around and choose which one we want. We have full services here, electric, water, dump, and they have laundry. We are going to be doing some resetting while we were here, getting lots of work done, but also exploring the city, and we are so excited to take you with us. Hi. They have vendors come to the RV park to sell us stuff and this guy has some beautifully made rugs. We're gonna buy some for sure. Oh yeah, the black one's nice, honey, yeah, huh? Este, oh, y me gusta este. esto. Creo los dos. Esto y el otro. Uh -huh. I'm happy with it. This no, is beautiful. No, I like that one. That's actually, I like the cafe. Mm-hmm. Gracias, amigo. Oh, gracias a ustedes, amigos. Tiene un buen día. Igualmente. Yeah. Mulahe is a super tiny, tiny town. There's not much to do here. But we met up with some friends, Victoria and Craig. They had to come into town for some errands, and we met up for lunch. This was a recommendation from Greg, one of our patrons. He came here on his epic motorcycle Baja trip, and we got all the stuff. I ended up getting their fried scallops, which is a specialty here, and the garlic shrimp. And then Victoria got the... Mm, Escalo Veracruzana. All of it tastes so good. He recommended specifically getting the fried scallops, and I can vouch for their deliciousness. What? Mulahe is a super charming town. The little plaza in the center is covered in Bougainvillea. 
All of the buildings are really bright and beautiful. The roads are so narrow. It was crazy driving our RV through here to get to our RV park. If you are coming here though, make sure to stock up on some cash because there is no banks and no ATMs in the city. There is a small little like grocery store tienda that you can do cash back from. Other than that, just be prepared for like a small sleepy little town, except for a few cool stops, including the mission at the top. It's also an old museum. The Mulehe Mission, also known as the Mission Santa Rosalia de Mulehe, was founded by Jesuit missionaries in 1705, with the goal of converting the native Kuchimi people to Catholicism. The mission was abandoned in 1828, but has since been restored and is now a popular tourist destination. Behind the mission, there's an overlook that provides visitors with an incredible view of the lush and green oasis in the middle of the desert. For thousands of years, this oasis has provided a reliable source of water, attracting a variety of plant and animal life, and has allowed the communities that lived here to thrive despite the harsh, arid climate of Baja California Sur. But we're heading to the beach today. I am so excited. We're gonna leave our little oasis of El Chano RV Park in Mulehe, and we are going to dry camp or boondock on some of Mulehe's beautiful beaches. There are several different beaches for you to choose from, all that offer dry camping for like $10 per night. Playa Santis Pack is the most popular, but it's also the most crowded. So I think we're gonna avoid that and try one of the other beaches in the area. I'm so excited to be going to the beach. Beach, yeah, the weather's beautiful today too. It like, is, finally. I'm in shorts. cool it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to get it the rig level here sometimes when you're RVing you rock up to a place that blows your mind so hard that you could actually live here for a minute <laughs> in your freaking RV and just enjoy it and this is one of them spots if you get every kind of vibe here epic just sick you can't look at it any spot of your 360 degree view, except maybe a little bit of trash <laughs> over in the corner. This is why you are Vibaja. Yup. Until we got here right now, in this very moment, I was kind of poo-pooing on Baja because I was uncomfortable and I was like, this isn't worth it. Like, when's the fun gonna start? Where's the, the Baja vibes that I've seen in the pictures online? Here it is. Luis invited Guadalupe. He said, you don't come to Baja and have adventures. You have sagas. And I was like, what the hell does that mean, dude? And then getting here, this has been a saga. Fruits of our labors. <laughs> we love little private spots like this. The other beaches are absolutely gorgeous, but they are way more popular. So it's just RVs all around. This is like way more our vibe. Super, super chill. Yep. We only have Low three key. neighbors. Yep. This is a dream. A this, dream! This is a dream. It's a paradise. Pilar, what are you doing? You enjoying yourself? Hmm? Hola! It's like 8 a.m. and someone's already trying to sell us something. I'm not even out of my pajamas yet. I was gonna say this is a dream for waking up. It still is a dream to wake up to. He's gonna do a medio kilo for 150. Sweet. I wanted shrimp, so this is good. You got the goods? Got the goods. <laughs> Nothing like a morning wake up call for camarones. Camarones before cafe. Yes. Hello. Any dolphins today? Well, we were thinking about moving here. Do it. Hi, Princess. We're not going that way. <laughs> he just wants to go everywhere he knows he's not going to be allowed to go. Uh-huh. We instantly fell into the routine of waking at sunrise, getting out in nature, and going for morning paddles. And one morning, I had the most magical experience.
hear you. Oh. <laughs> I cannot believe that happened. A pod of like a hundred dolphins came right by me. I mean, they were swimming under my paddleboard all around me when their spouts would go Phew. It was like so loud. I mean, I could feel it. It was incredible. I honestly cried out there. I'm not gonna lie. It was such a magical moment. Last night we sat by were. the fire and we were asking each other, what are some of the memories that you've had on the road? Just filled with that immense feeling of gratefulness and joy. We all started with kind of like one big memory. Before we knew it, we just kept sharing more and more memories because this lifestyle can be so amazing. And this was one of those core memories that I will 100% look back on and think, I can't, I can't believe that happened. Hmm. Oh, wow, look at all the flowers. Whoa. Let's go this way. <laughs> Cut up. Dude, I fell off the paddle board. Dang. Could have been worse, I guess. Just could have cracked my skull. But I didn't do that. Ooh, there's a crab. We got an inflatable paddleboard used on Facebook Marketplace before we came here. Because Baja is like a paddler's paradise. This is only one of many spots we will be able to use this beautiful paddleboard. I don't ever want to leave here. This place is pretty perfect. Yeah, this spot is paradise. What do you think? I don't know. It's a little sketchy hanging in the, in the uh, palapa. You definitely can't just like plop down into it. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, look at this, this view right here, baby. All right, take a nap. <laughs> what do we got? Tamales and an empanada <laughs> for 50 pesos. The vendors don't stop. They're pretty relentless all day. You just have random people drive up offering you all sorts of things. Fish, zucchini, carrot bread. We have spent all of our pesos, so we cannot purchase anything else. You're really just gonna take it to the face. I thought we were sharing. It's good. It's like tinga. Mm. It has tomato and papa and chicken. As much as it breaks my heart, we're leaving today. Today's drive is short, thank heavens. It's only about an hour and a half to our next destination. Truck alert. I mean, we probably got room to leave the mirror out, but I don't want to take no chances. I am so ready for this. So we came to Super Burro. It's had very good reviews online. I asked the waitress what she recommended because they have a, a bunch of different types of meat that you can get in the burritos. And she said, absolutely, you have to get the arechera, which is flank steak. So that's what I got. Dennis got something that is like a fajita where he gets to kind of build his own with handmade corn tortillas or flour tortillas. It's like, I'm so hungry and excited. Biggest burrito I think I've ever seen. Mm. Good. Mm. Mm. Winner. Very good. This is exactly what I was craving. So cheesy and good. They're definitely very similar to fajitas. Like it gives you that fajita feel. But the way they do their flank steak there is banging. Wow. They got a dial. Yeah. Not believe so you finished that whole thing. I can't either, <laughs> but I did. But you did it. Good morning. Good morning. How was sleeping on the street? Not bad. We got to Laredo way too late. We were running errands, got burritos. By the time we tried to get to an RV park, it was like 8.30 p.m. Yeah, we, we definitely tried to find a camp spot too late. I guess we should have done that first thing, but I don't know if it would have changed it. Like all three of the RV parks in Laredo were completely full. And we've never had that happen in 
any of our other Mexican adventures. Like we always had space. 11 months, 21 states in mainland Mexico, never. So we ended up finding a spot on iOverlander on the street. Right next to the Malecon, right on the bay. We did find a spot at two RV parks during our stay in Loreto. The first, Riviera del Mar and Romanita. Romanita is our favorite because we could walk everywhere, but it is not well suited for RVs over 30 feet. Riviera del Mar is big rig friendly, but it is a very tight RV park and it wasn't as central. Well, this is just lovely. <laughs> We made it to the main plaza. There's a coffee shop right in the corner, lots of restaurants. It's just like so charming. It almost feels like a little Europe. There's all these little tables outside for you to just enjoy breakfast or coffee. And there is a lot of gringos. I mean, I think we've said hello to like 20 people this morning and only one of those times have they said hola. It's crazy how many gringos are here, but this is the only Pueblo Magico, I think in all of Mexico that has an international airport. So it's a popular spot for people to come to visit because it's really accessible and charming. I am so ready for this, it looks so good. Dennis got the huevos divorciados and I got the huevos oaxaqueño, which has mole and it has Oaxaca cheese. <laughs> and a little tip for you guys, we ordered agua de la casa, which is water that they just get from a garrafon. So if you ever come to a restaurant and you don't wanna pay for bottled water, we highly recommend not doing that. Just ask for agua de la casa. And also, ice here comes from an agua purificada, so it is not dangerous to drink ice or have ice in your margarita or whatever you're drinking. Yeah. Cheers. It no is way. so nice to have mole again. It's like my favorite. My favorite, favorite, favorite. Loreto is the oldest pueblo in Baja, California. Inhabited by the Cochimi people for thousands of years, then later by Jesuit missionaries, the city served as the first capital of the Californias from 1697 to 1777. The town was named in honor of Our Lady of Loreto, the patron saint of the region, and the name of the historic mission in the center of town. To get to know Loreto better, we took a walking history tour with Loreto Baja Tours. Our guide Carlos led us around the city, explaining the role Loreto had in Baja's long and complicated history. The Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés arrived in Loreto in 1533. He was searching for Baja because he believed it was an island inhabited by giant, goddess-like warrior women called Khalifa. Cortes never found these mythical women, but he did find the Baja Peninsula and its many indigenous tribes. After learning about the murals inside the Capitol building, we stopped at Casa Piedra, one of Loreto's oldest buildings and where the Declaration of Baja California Sur as a territory was signed in 1888. Casa Piedra Museum has so many amazing photos of Loreto throughout the years. We loved learning about Casa Piedra's history with the mission and seeing the secret passageway that missionaries could use to escape if they were under pirate siege. It was a grueling challenge to build a missionary here. Baja's extreme climate made it very difficult to grow food and sustain life year round. The Spanish Jesuit missionary who established Baja's first mission in Loreto was close to giving up entirely when a hurricane struck and flooded the city. He asked for a sign from God as to whether or not he should go on with this mission when he found a washed up stump in the shape of a cross beside him. He took this as a sign to keep building and the wooden cross now resides in the courtyard of the Mission Museum. 10 out of 10 recommend this walking history tour. It's right next to Romania RV Park in the downtown historic center. We have learned so much about not just Loreto, but Baja California's history. It gives me a whole new appreciation for our experience here. Our guide Carlos is fluent in English, so if you do not speak Spanish, you don't have to worry. But definitely do this. This was super, super cool. Today we are going to be driving about an hour outside of Loreto to visit San Javier Mission. The drive out here is beautiful. I mean, absolutely fantastic. But there are some water crossings. There's natural springs all throughout this area. So there's water flowing constantly, even though we're in the middle of the desert. Some of those spots can be quite slippery, which is how we crashed. Oh, okay. We definitely crashed. You good? Yeah. Oh, I did it. Oh, are you okay? Oh! Hi! Did you hit your head? Yeah, I did. I'm okay? I'll be okay, yeah. I mean, my knee hit the ground, but I think I'm good. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you can see it's all right. Oh, yeah, look, it's swelling up. Oh, honey. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's it's real big. This is so slippery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gracias. Boom. So you can see on the side all the people slipping. So the key is to come in the center. Coming through here on two wheels, like definitely take it easy over these water crossings because you saw what just happened. I'm glad we're okay, but we are a little shooken up, that's for sure. That was scary. It's not fun crashing on a motorcycle for the first time. But we've made it, and it is beautiful here. I'm really glad we came. We're going to be showing you around the San Javier Mission, but to kind of decompress for what just happened, we're grabbing some lunch at one of the restaurants here. Ooh, this is fancy, dude. They, it they is fancy. fancy. We want a little comfort food. Yeah, this will definitely get the job done. <laughs> The San Javier Mission was founded in 1699, two years after the Loreto Mission was completed. This mission was one of the few to succeed thanks to a reliable supply of fresh water from a nearby spring, which allowed the Spaniards to cultivate food. It is gorgeous. The views all around, the building itself, they've reconstructed it really, really well. Today, visitors can enjoy the stunning Baroque architecture, beautiful frescoes, and a 300-year-old olive tree that stands near the Spanish-built aqueduct and natural spring. Aqueducts are cool. Yeah, it's pretty red. Yeah, it's amazing that they were able to sustain life here temporarily because of this spring. But that's why the native peoples would have been here, is because they knew they had water source here that was reliable, right? Mm-hmm. You don't normally come out for desayunos, but Mexican desayuno breakfast is our favorite. We found this little place on the side of the street. It didn't have many reviews, and it's definitely visited frequently by the locals. It's called Mi Pequeña Poblanita. It's super easy to miss, but so far it has been our favorite spot we've eaten at. They specialize in foods that came from the region of Puebla, which is one of our favorite food scenes in all of Mexico. We got the chilaquiles con salsa verde, and I'm so excited. Try <laughs> to get every last bite. We told them how much we loved their mole. They brought us out an enmolada, which is kind of like a quesadilla. They fold it over and then they fill it with either like meat or cheese or vegetables and they smother it in this most incredible mole sauce and then put onion, crema, and a different type of cheese on top. It's so good. I think this one's chicken. <laughs> They're mole's to die for. Anything else we had for mole so far? is a joke compared to this, really, in Loreto. I highly encourage you as you're traveling throughout all of Mexico to find the spots that aren't necessarily on the strip or maybe highly reviewed by a lot of gringos that are visiting because I think you're gonna have a more authentic experience and it's definitely more economical. These were half the prices for every plate compared to the places on the strip. Doesn't mean the places on the strip are bad, it just is a different experience. Right. Downtown is not only super cute, but very walkable. They have pedestrian only streets that are lined with a bunch of shops. Most of the stuff is like same from shop to shop. It's different backpacks, shirts, trinketries for you to take home as souvenirs. But I did find a really cute cover up dress that would be perfect for when we get further south and I think I'm gonna buy it. We've learned from our travels in Mexico, if you find something that you really like at a shop, buy it because it's hard to find the exact same piece from shop to shop. I can't tell you how many times we've thought, we'll see that again and we'll buy it next time and then we didn't. Mmm. I think. It's super yummy. Is it nice and savory or is it still sweet? It's still sweet. It has pineapple and orange in it. It has spirulina and celery and spinach as well. So it's a perfect balance there. It's not overly sweet. We don't like a lot of fruit in our smoothies. This is very yummy. And I was definitely craving something green. Oh, he's having a hard time. Oh my gosh. Big rigs can come to Baja. There's, we've seen pretty much every type of RV possible on this trip, but yeah, it ain't get, for the faint of heart. If you got the grit, it's totally doable, but oh. that does not look comfortable to me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. that ain't us. It's is crazy. Ripping. I know. Which is a bummer because a big thing to do if you come to Loreto is to explore the surrounding islands. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is a national park out there. So that is a very popular activity. You can take kayak tours or boat tours. Coronado Island is the most popular. It's supposed to have absolutely breathtaking crystal clear blue beaches. You can also go snorkeling there and since it's undeveloped, it's supposed to have pristine wildlife for you to enjoy. It's definitely a bummer we don't get to do that this trip, but Maybe in the future. I think it'd also be really, really cold for that activity right now. It's definitely a summer, spring, fall thing. It's a little chilly here, so 
It's also fantastic for whale watching. They have several different species of whales pass through here. You can also see sea lions. We don't have a tour company to recommend. I know that the Malacone, they do have several different uh, lanchas or tour guides that you can just come up here and speak to about pricing. Also in the downtown area, right by the plaza, yeah, they yeah. had a lot of people pitching uh, Any of boat the tours. will be happy to sell you something. <laughs> as far as the tour goes. Loretto has been a lovely town. It's perfect for a little stopover as you continue to head south, but we are ready for warmer weather. This is, I've heard it only gets better as we continue south and I am ready for no jackets. <laughs> so, further south, here we come. We're gonna be heading to La Paz. It's like a four and a half, five hour drive today. The entire country of Mexico, you don't pump your own gas. There's always a pump attendant and they'll do everything for you. They'll check your oil, their cleaner cristales, which is your windshield, and they work for, for tips. You don't have to go overboard, but five or 10 pesos is usually very appreciated. Always ask if you can pay with card before you pump the gas, because a lot of them won't accept cars, especially out in the country. It's a good idea, especially in mainland, to get out and make sure that they reset the pump to zero. We have heard of scams where they leave it at whatever the last person bought and then they'll pump yours knowing the math in their head and then they'll charge you more and pocket the difference. But it's just something to be aware of. In Baja California, there's two main highways that run down the state until you get to Baja California Sur, where they merge into Highway 1, which is the only road that will take you all the way down the peninsula. As we travel to La Paz, Highway 1 turns into a super windy, narrow road. There are some sections that have absolutely no guardrail. You've seen where people have gone off. And it is just crazy curvy as you go through these mountain passes. Welcome to La Paz. We are so excited to be here. We have heard so much about this charming city. It's the largest in Baja California Sur, and it kind of has that city vibe we love about mainland Mexico, like Mexico City or Puebla or Oaxaca. There's so much art and street vendors. It just has this like vibe to it that's really refreshing. We're gonna be spending a week here in two separate trips. We have our friends coming to visit us. We're gonna go on some awesome, awesome adventures. We just grabbed breakfast at La Esquina del Chef. We got the chilaquiles, it was fantastic and super affordable. And now we just came to the park, we grabbed some coffee and, and watching the birds do their mating rituals. <laughs> just kind of having a chill morning. It's really, really nice to just sit in the shade and enjoy the vibes of the city. Let's go check out La Paz. Driving in the city is a bit chaotic. This is definitely way busier than anywhere else we've been in Baja. The streets just kind of like merge together in some spots. Half of the intersections, no one really stops. You kind of have to like be really cautious as you're driving. But once you get into the centro or you get on the Malacone, it's super, super tranquilo. There's an art museum in the center of town that has a really cool art installation. It reminds us of the lights you can find at LACMA in Los Angeles. Malacan is a must if you're coming to La Paz. It's one of the best we've seen in all of Mexico. It's 5.5 kilometers long, and there are so many different restaurants and shops. There's several beaches and playgrounds along the way. We passed it at night when we're driving on our scooter or in the RV, and this place just comes alive. There's like a skate park and a splash pad. There's also all these statues scattered throughout. It's also a very bikeable city. We have seen a lot of cyclists here, and there's a bike path that goes down the entire Malacón and even a little bit further out to the marina at the end. There's also a farmer's market on Saturdays for you to check out. Yeah, if you're looking for a nice beach day or just want to kind of get a vibe for the city, this is definitely the spot to do it. We came to Toto Frito. It's right off the Malacón with some new friends. They're staying at the same RV park as us and they follow our channel, which is so cool. So they invited us out for dinner. This is fish and chips and oyster poi boys. And then upstairs, they also have oysters. It's kind of like this fun food truck vibe. It's like an old collectivo that they souped up. It's really cool. Yeah. It's not Mexican at all, <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's not delicious. 
We're going on a boat tour. Today we will be heading to Espiritu Santo National Park. It's a national park just off of La Paz, about an hour boat's drive away, and the only way to get here is on a boat tour. So today we have randomly found a boat tour. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but we made it. And we're gonna be making several stops for a like five to six hour boat tour, which includes lunch. The big, big draw here to coming to this island over others is it has amazing snorkeling, but also a sea lion colony. And the sea lions are supposed to be super, super friendly here and like enjoy swimming with people. This will be a complete first for us. I'm a little bit nervous, a lot of bit excited. Espiritu Santo Island is the ancestral homeland of the Piricuas people. After Spanish colonization in the 1600s, the island was renamed to Espiritu Santo, meaning the Holy Spirit. It was then exploited for its natural resources, pearls in particular for centuries. But in 1995, the island was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in a national park, protecting the island's unique biodiversity for generations to come. The island and its waters are home to over 900 species of plants and animals including several endangered and endemic species, like the blue-footed booby and the frigate, a migratory bird that can glide above the high winds of ocean storms for weeks, conserving its energy by turning off half its brain at a time. The Pirico people had a deep connection with the area, both physically and spiritually. In one part of the park, you'll see a face in the rock. The Piracuas people believed this was the representation of their creator. The sacred place was where the Piracuas would come and rest in water at sunset before passing on to the spirit world. Today, Espiritu Santo Island is managed in cooperation with local communities, who are actively involved in conservation efforts and ecotourism to protect the area's biodiversity and beauty. This is like Nat Geo. I cannot believe we're going swimming with sea lions. There's so many here. She said there's like 500 to 700 in this colony. You can only swim with them in the winter time. The summer time's like their time off away from humans to do their thing, mate, have some fun. But they're everywhere, just swimming all around. Honestly, like all I can swim. think about, don't swim sharks like, like to eat sea lions? That's all I've been thinking about. <laughs> Same thoughts that are running through your head are running through mine. It's also going to be very cold. Hence the wetsuits, we were able to rent them as part of the tour. We're going to be in the water for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to push through the cold. I'm swimming with sea lions today. <laughs> I'm warming up and this is so cool. We're gonna go to the cave where all the baby sea lions are. The way they were like contorting themselves to sleep on the rocks earlier, they look like cats. They do look like cats. It's just so fun getting to see them like swim underneath you. They get so close. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Everyone has to do this. <laughs> wow. After you go swimming with sea lions, they take you to a nearby beach to just kind of chill, warm up after getting out of that freezing cold water. They also serve us a homemade ceviche for lunch. I think we have two hours to enjoy at this literally breathtaking beach. It is gorgeous. We're surrounded by this pink rock in a little secluded cove and because the water is so shallow it has that beautiful bright turquoise color. It's just so weird to be in such a landscape like this, a mix between the most beautiful tropical paradise you've ever seen and an extremely dry desert. I'm getting like northern Arizona vibes. I'm in paradise. I love this tour so much. Let's see what they got for lunch. Mm. Ah. It's very nice.
<laughs> you got it's gonna, to. It's gonna be a cold boat ride back too. <laughs> too tired to figure out where we were gonna eat. Didn't wanna to have to drive anywhere. And the marina that we took the tour on has tons of restaurants to choose from. Sushi place, sounded perfect. And everything looks awesome so far. We ordered a bunch of different rolls and dishes. The sun's going down, it's lovely. Delicious. Yeah. Today we are visiting Belandra Beach. It has been voted one of the most beautiful beaches in all of Mexico and arguably the world. It is a super popular destination here in La Paz and we got a little taste of it on our boat tour yesterday so we're really excited to be able to hang out on the beach today. Belandra Beach is a part of a protected area so they have restricted how many people can visit each day. I believe it's around 450 people maximum at a time and there's two times that you can come either 8 a.m. in the morning and then they have you leave at 12 or you can arrive at 1 p.m. and you get to stay at the beach until 5. So we chose the 1 p.m. just because we're not morning people and we arrived about 45 minutes early on a Thursday. There was a long line but we were able to get in with no problem. But the beach is filling up quickly so if you plan to come here I highly recommend getting in line early so that you can secure your spot here. It's completely free to come and it is absolutely stunning. It definitely lives up to the height. We got a lovely little spot the boys are setting up. Cheers! What do you think? It's like flat out there, the same water depths, which is kind of odd to keep walking and walking and walking and it <laughs> still touch the same area of your legs. I could just live here. Oh my God, right? It is so hard to describe how beautiful this place really is. I know we are not capturing it well enough. It's one of those places you just have to come and see for yourself. Absolutely incredible. There are several hikes, so if you wanna get a bird's eye vantage point of the beach, that is definitely the best way to do it. We came to Nemi, which was in the top 150 restaurants in all of Mexico for three years in a row. They're a very seasonal restaurant. They change their menu every single week. They also change out the decor, the glasses, the wine that they're serving, which is so, so cool. The menu looks fantastic, and this is going to be an incredible dining experience for us here. I'm very excited. If there's one place you come, Nemi is it. Our server Eduardo is incredible. The food is so, so tasty. And you get, I don't know, just such a unique experience coming here. They're so passionate about their food. I'm like in heaven. This is amazing. We are camping at Maranatha RV Park, which is about a 10 to 20 minute drive outside of the city near the airport in La Paz. It is the nicest RV park we have found pretty much in all of Mexico. The amenities they offer here rival any RV park that you would find in the United States or Canada. They have a pool, basketball courts, volleyball. They have an area for children to play, laundry, showers, and even handicap accessible bathrooms and the electricity here has full 50 amps. So if you are looking to hook up to get away from this hot heat down in La Paz, then this is the place to do it. Most people who come to La Paz end up camping in Tecalote, which is a beautiful beach that is north of town, about 45 minutes to an hour. It is free camping. It can be very, very popular spot. So sometimes it can be hard to find a spot, but we've seen reviews on iOverlander lately that talked about theft. So we just decided with our short time that we're here in La Paz, we'd rather stay with full hookups and amenities for our kitties and be a little bit closer to town so we can explore the city. I was talking to the owner and the property has been in the family a long time. They've now turned it into an RV park to support their not-for-profit. So they use part of this property as communal spaces for different groups like Boy Scouts or church groups. So whenever you're camping here, you're doing a little bit of good as well. If you don't have a vehicle to get around, there are a few spots that are within walking distance or a short Uber drive away. Dennis found the most amazing carnita spot the other day. He said it was one of the best that he's had in all of our travels. We'll add a pin to it here so you can check it out for yourself. Definitely recommended. For our last night in La Paz, we came with our friends to Merkin on Sunday nights. They have 
live flamenco music. Everyone gets up and dances. It's such an ambiance. We came here the other night for dinner. The food was fantastic. The owner is super sweet. It's a Chilean restaurant. So they have a lot of dishes from Chile, but they've also incorporated like dishes from Mexico and the local ingredients. So it's kind of like a fusion. Highly, highly recommend, and it's a really close drive from the RV park we're staying at. A few tips if you're gonna come here. Make reservations on Sundays and come early. We're here at like 6 p.m. and they're out of like almost everything on the menu. It's been a very busy day. We are, it's a miracle we even got a table. <laughs> good? Very good. Nice. About an hour and a half southwest of La Paz on the Pacific Ocean are the towns of Todos Santos, Pescadero, and Cerritos Beach. Known for fantastic surfing and their budding expat community, this area is by far the most popular spot for van lifers and RVers each winter, thanks to its amazing restaurants, bars, and beaches. We are at Cerritos Beach Campground. It's pretty much a parking lot right along the beach shore. It's 200 pesos or 20 US dollars per night, but your access to the beach is unbeatable. We just have our friends parked right next to us, playing lots of games, eating lots of good food. We came to Petit Leon and they are a French bakery. They have such an amazing variety of different breads, pastries. We got a salmon bagel. We got something with baba ganoush and it has Betta Beller beets on top. We also got a croque monsieur. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> and they have two croissants that they stuff with fruit. So one we got with lemon and the other is with guava. They also have smoothies, gluten-free options if you're interested. Definitely recommend it. We absolutely devoured everything. I like inhaled it so good. I think we're gonna still get more food on the <laughs> though, even though we ate way too much. Our little food tour continues on. I mean, we drove all the way in here from the exactly. beach, so mm -hmm. gotta make it worth it, right? We came down the street to Carnitas Machine. They specialize in one thing and one thing only, Carnitas, which is from pork, slow roasted. They put spices on it. You can get it in a quesadilla, gordita, or tacos. We chose tacos and gorditas, and they have salsas. You can do it all up like you want. Very tasty. I like the gordita better. Uh huh. It's just more corn. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, a little snack. Hey, I just stopped their loves for snack. That's working, huh? Oh, it's working. They're so cute. We came to Soritos Beach Dogs. It is the newest cafe here. You might have heard about it from Eamon and Beck who helped found this non-for-profit organization. They rescue dogs in the area that are available for adoption. They sell coffee and different pastries and like treats and helps fund the care of these animals. We've been wanting to come here for a while since they opened it. They just opened it a few months ago, but. Oh my God, the dogs are so cute. Hi. Oh my gosh, you're so cute, Dennis. Oh, this one's feisty. If you're looking for a dog, this is a fantastic place to adopt. You can bring them back to the United States or Canada, wherever you're traveling from. But if you also just want to support them, come get a coffee here. <laughs> and I think I'm over my puppy type. <laughs> <laughs> They're just biting me now. They're like going in my pockets. Puppies are a handful. He wants to come home with you. Oh, oh, he's giving me the puppy eyes. Well, duh. Oh. <laughs> we love dogs, but we're not ready for that responsibility. Si, hola. Yes, you're all better now, aren't you? She had terrible mange when they got her. She was in such bad condition. And they've done so good getting her help. Oh, look at how happy she is. Oh, watch for it. Nothing like a little dirt road in Baja. 
I don't think you can really understand how bumpy these roads are. The washboard section of these dirt roads just makes the entire RV shake. And when you get off the main highway down in Baja California, so all the roads are dirt like this. So definitely be prepared for some wild roads. Slow, slow and steady. We are leaving Cerritos Beach. So we're heading into Todos Santos. There's an RV park there. There used to be a lot of RV boondocking around the Todos Santos area and some of the beaches, but sadly they've been closed down over this last year because there has been a lot of misuse of public lands here. Some van lifers and RVers have just not been treating the lands well, dumping their tanks, leaving trash behind, leaving behind their own waste, if you know what I mean. So please, if you come here, wherever you're camping, make sure to be a responsible camper. Pick up after yourself, leave no, leave no trace, take your trash with you. Find a facility that is legal for dumping. Don't just dump your tanks wherever you feel it's okay to. Just came to Taller de Asiciete for some breakfast. They're known for coffee as well as pastries. They have different brownies, cookies, muffins. The most incredible looking cinnamon rolls. I'm so excited. Delicious. This is a cheddar scone with a little bit of pepper in it. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> the cream cheese frosting, guys. Just do it. Can definitely recommend this if you're looking for something quick and easy so you can keep exploring the city. What's up, bud? Toto Santos is the ancestral homeland of the Pericu people. The town center we see today was established in the early 1700s by Jesuit missionaries. Toto Santos became the largest sugarcane producer in Baja, California for over 100 years thanks to the abundant freshwater source from the nearby oasis. The sugar mills were closed due to a drought in the mid-1900s, but visitors can still see deteriorated ruins of the old mills scattered throughout the city. You gotta love Mexico. Our last stop for the evening was Baja Veria, a beer garden owned and operated by former full-time RVers who now call Todos Santos home. They had a great selection of beers with live music and amazing southern-style barbecue chicken smoked by a local asadero. This is good barbecue. What a vibe. Our friends have arrived. We came to Jazzamongo Cafe, which is supposed to be an incredible spot for breakfast. And since we're here with friends, we ordered way too much food so we could try all of the things. We have chilaquiles and salsa verde. We have sopes, which has chicharron. It's kind of like a fried pork skin on top. And then it has a layer of black beans, egg. We got ilote corn pancakes and a croissant with eggs and huevos rancheros. The verde is the jam. Oh, good. I'm glad we got verde then. Mm -hmm. Delicious. <laughs> There's so many shops and boutiques for you to visit, so I definitely recommend spending a full day exploring all of the cute different little spots. Although we were ready for the beach, it is just a short drive from Todos Santos, and it is surrounded by an oasis with all of these amazing palm trees. And then you just come to this little cove that is absolutely breathtaking. There's like wild horses on the beach just gallivanting around. What is not to love? I mean, look at this. If we're really lucky, we'll be able to see some whales passing by. Ooh, we saw a whale! There is a whale out there. We stopped at Agricole, which is a really cute shop. It's kind of like the Whole Foods of Baja California Sur here. They have their own organic farm that produces a lot of the produce there. So we grabbed some salads, we have a little bit of vino and beer, and we were just gonna have a lush beach day. They think I have food. I don't have any food, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no tengo comida, nada. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, we're so close. Oh my <laughs> to finish off an absolutely perfect day, we came to the green room, which is the spot to catch a sunset if you are in Toro Santos. It has spectacular views just as the sun is going down. And honestly, the restaurant is incredible. They have their own organic garden out back that they get all of their vegetables from. Their menu is fantastic, featuring fresh local seafood. Their drinks are spectacular. So definitely, definitely come here. Even if you can't get a reservation, I highly recommend stopping by for a drink. 
you would hate this. <laughs> it's <was> delicious. <laughs> Cheers. Holy moly, this is delicious. We got the chimichangas and like a chipotle sauce and cochinita pibil. I think we are in for a treat. Sometimes is filled with a ton of fancier restaurants, kind of sit down style, what you might be more accustomed to as travelers. But I highly recommend coming to the park in the center of town. There is a birria stand that arrives every morning. This birria is de res, which means it's from beef. And he slow roasts the beef overnight in its own consomme, its own juices, and it creates this like amazing flavor. Highly, highly, highly recommend if you've never had birria before to come to this stand. It is a morning dish, so he arrives around like 8.30 and normally sells out by like 11 or 12 at the latest. It's cheap eats, street food in the like best possible way. This is what you want. <laughs> this is so big. Mm -hmm. Santi did not prep me for the size of this thing. He just said that the torso was badass. And it is. I'm not gonna want anything else to eat for the rest of the day. <laughs> Good thing we're going on a hike. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to hike. I'm gonna have to nap. <laughs> If you want to be able to eat some more later, then get one or two quesadillas because this torta is going to put me down, but it's going to be worth it. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. We did the Puerto Viejo hike, which takes you out to the old port next to the old sugar mill in Toro Santos, and it is absolutely stunning. You get to this private cove with the most crystal clear turquoise water and just the most striking cliffs, the waves crashing. It's absolutely breathtaking. We've seen a few whales off in the distance as well, which is awesome because I think the whales are starting to make their way north. They're really only here for the winter time. I think January to March is peak season. Definitely recommend this hike. It's a big bang for your buck. It's only about four and a half miles round trip. And that's if you go all the way down to the cove. We decided to turn around at the viewpoint at the top just to make the hike a little bit easier for us. It is midday. And it's starting to get super, super hot. We don't have any water. Or anything with us so this is one of many hikes you can do in the area highly recommend checking out all trails to see if there's any other hikes that look interesting to you if you are coming here but definitely add this one to your list we've loved our time in Todos Santos it's a place that I was kind of skeptical if it was gonna be worth the hype or not but after being here for close to a week I've definitely see what the appeal is it's so 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 charming it's worth it get here we were on our way to pick up my mom from the airport in San Jose del Cabo. We realized we have a flat tire. We ran over a screw, rather large one. Dennis was just doing his like normal walk rounds and noticed it. So luckily we have a patch for the tire. Dennis is gonna try and patch it. Hopefully we can at least just pick my mom up from the airport on time. I've never done this before. <laughs> if you ever have this problem and you're trying to get someone else to fix it, you need to say, yo tengo un llanto punchada. I don't know how far I'm like supposed to go in. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should read the instructions. Insert tool, plug through the hole, position it over the hole, leaving a half inch of cord visible. This is all you do now, now you just trim it. No to, way. To the tire, yeah. And then fill, refill the tire with air. This is also just a friendly reminder that if you plan to RV or do van life, it pays to be a handy person. You are going to have breakdowns on the road. I am so grateful that Dennis is like, able to tackle so much of the projects that come up with the RV. And kind of thinking ahead of yourself. I installed power sources for our new air pump on both sides of the RV. That way I wouldn't have to like plug it into the cigarette lighter inside and leave the door flopping open and the cat's running out. Plus this new air pump is pretty heavy duty so I didn't want it pulling off the chassis battery either. I'd rather pull off the house since we have so many amp hours like that's easily replaceable. I'll leave links to all of my emergency tire repair stuff that I bought specifically for Baja in the video description. Six and a half minutes flat to full. We're back on the road. Let's go pick up moms. And we're off. came to Agave, which is right on that super adorable downtown strip. Oh my gosh, this city is so cute. Mezcal butter with roasted pineapples. I mean, come on. You didn't even like mezcal. Look at you. Whoa. Whoa. This just brought me life. Like that. I'm not mad at how much we're paying to eat here anymore. <laughs> what do you think, Mom? 
Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. Perfect. Said it all. Uh -huh. Food so far has just been spectacular. The presentation, everything's so beautiful. You can tell they're making the pasta in house. It has like the perfect bite to it. The sauce is delicious. Nice. This place is very good. Definitely recommend. The prices are steep, but it. the food is worth it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That was cool. Yeah. We're having a chill day at the RV park. If you're coming here in an RV and hoping to explore San Jose de Cabo, your best bet is Rancho de Clandestino. It's dry camping, but they have beautiful, beautiful like shared grounds, an outdoor kitchen, all this like lounging area with hammocks and Wi-Fi showers. It's definitely a nice spot where you can kind of like explore the city quickly. Because I think other than that, the only options are beach camping and it's pretty far from the city itself. This place is so fun. The ambiance is fantastic. It's like an antique shop in here. <laughs> they just have all this amazing and super cool decor. The food is also fantastic. We just got tried a bunch of different tacos. Since it's my mom's first time in Mexico, we wanted her to kind of like see what she liked. We also got a quesadilla de huila coche, which is like a fungus that grows on corn. It sounds weird, but it's really not. It's kind of like a mushroom. So far, my favorite taco is the costilla, which is the ribs. My mom loved the cochinita pibil, and the arrechera was also delicious. Prices are great. It definitely feels like a more local vibe. Muy rico. <laughs> Flora Farms is a must stop if you're coming to San Jose del Cabo. It is a 25 acre property that is a food forest. They have done an incredible job regenerating the soil and now they grow organic food that not only feeds the restaurant here on site but also feeds the residents and they have a little shop so you can come to purchase fresh organic food. They have a separate property for livestock. They have chickens, they have pigs. It is like our dream come true, I'm not gonna lie. We've always fantasized about owning property and having an organic farm, like a family compound, with a bunch of different houses, and that's exactly what they've created here. It's amazing. Salud. <laughs> this place is so cute. There's people serenading us with music. We're like sitting in between this gorgeous farm in the open air. I need all of that now. Why, there's a lot. <laughs> I won't so spongy and delicate. You can book tours. They have cooking classes, they have art classes, they also have native plant tours where you can learn about medicinal plants that they grow on the site, and they do free farm tours, but you have to book these things like pretty well in advance. Now we have to go buy some produce because we are going to be going to the beach for the rest of this trip. Get stuck up, all the goodies. Thursday evening during peak season they have an art walk in the downtown plaza there is just rows and rows of different vendors they have lots of different artists here displaying their work there's also galleries all throughout that you can visit but they also have like handmade goods there's purses bracelets clothing all different types of stuff even food and they have live music so this is like such a vibe right now there's so many people here we've heard from pretty much everyone that if we were coming to San Jose del Cabo we we had to do the Thursday night art walk, so. Here we are, mom's already off shopping. She's loving life. <laughs> I'm super duper excited for this. I am blown away by some of the art that we've seen here tonight. There's amazing artwork, sculptures, paintings, photographs. Even though this is a very touristy thing, it feels really genuine and authentic of Mexico. I don't know, you have like people walking around with carts selling gummies and nuts and there's a lote and tosi lote carts. And, and it just feels special. I'm really enjoying this. We wanted my mom to have the full Mexico experience so we took her to a mezcaleria to try her first taste of mezcal. Before we knew it, the bartender offered Dennis a unique opportunity to try a scorpion soaked in mezcal. That's about as big as the one I almost Wait. stepped on the other day. Oh. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. There's fruit in there for sure. Yeah, it's orange. Orange? Yeah, it tastes like orange. Ah! <laughs> it's definitely like very much alcohol and then 
a really bright orange flavor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's about the same as a chapolina, see, but it doesn't disappear as fast. Yeah, because it's much bigger. So it has that crunch to it like chapolina? Yeah. Oh. No. There wasn't anything like freaky, squishy, no. It was, it was an enjoyable experience. Our final stop for the evening was the farm to table restaurant Sage, known for having unique cuisine and incredible ambiance. It was very nice. Yeah? I was afraid it was going to be too sweet, but it's actually really balanced. Good. Salt, foam, sake, and mezcal. Dang. Yeah. I always get the up glass every time I order a drink, but I always love it. <laughs> so, I guess it's who I am. Yeah, I can break it. Thank you up. <laughs> wow, mine's really good. Oh, I really like it. Get that monkey, get the monkey in my own nasal. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> yes, he does want to be pet. It is very Aww, fun to have a donkey on site. Geronimo, Geronimo. This is a great spot. I wish there was a dump because there's really no dump station in all of the Los Cabos area. So just come prepared for that. But his facilities make it so easy to not have to worry about using water in your own RV. It's been super difficult to get an Uber driver to Rancho Clandestino because it is out of the city. And the way Uber sends the drivers is like kind of wacky down in Arroyo and it gets very confusing for them. So we've had so many people cancel on us, but we did get a driver, Edwin, who picked us up twice. Yeah, he lives in the neighborhood. He lives in the next neighborhood. The he knows it well. So we'll have his contact information down below. He said if you just want to contact him directly, he will pick you up and take you around. He knows exactly how to get here and is super, super sweet. We are going to be heading out of here tomorrow morning for something very exciting. I cannot wait to show you. We came on a whale watching tour with Cabo Trek in Cabo San Lucas. This is pretty much the only activity we're doing in Cabo San Lucas, but it is famous for its arch. It's known for its whales in peak season, which is November from April. She's so excited. We did just get to see a whale. It's my mom's first whale ever. <laughs> this is amazing. Our first sighting of humpback whales was a competence group, a group of male humpback whales competing for the attention of a female. The group was moving incredibly fast, trying to outpace each other and win the right to breed with the leading female. We could audibly hear how exhausted the males were with each breath. But they couldn't stop, or they would lose their chance at mating. We've already had such an amazing show, and it's only just begun. <laughs> this has been the most incredible experience. I've always wanted to see whales. Humpback whales are one of four whale species that come to Baja California each winter to breed and give birth. This is awesome. Even though we got to touch gray whales when we were in Cura del Negro, every experience to get this close to a whale is magic. And these are humpback whales, so completely different species, different behaviors, just as amazing. Oh, wow. Now there's a baby and a mom. This is awesome. It's just so awesome to hear them singing and talking. It's so sacred and spiritual. I want to cry right now. This is so cool. You happy? You happy? <laughs> so happy. I'm just, I'm blown away. These animals, they have like a really complex communication, really complex zones. You what we think we know nowadays is that they have the same zone for everyone. Almost all the whales are adding new notes on new music, new sentence, that they are transmitting to the others their new additions to that zone. So it's like culture. They see how the new additions are moving around the globe. Sentence, they have drama. What's up, bro? Oh, got it. I hooked them up. But getting up at 5:45 this morning to get here for the 8 a.m. tour was totally worth it because the arch views were totally unobstructed. 
The weather was nice, the wind was down, the seas were pretty calm. But coming back in, there were so many more boats on the water that I'm extra stoked that we did the early morning tour. Not only do they have trained marine biologists on board, they are out here studying these animals on a daily basis. It's really cool to be able to support a tour group that cares so much about the well-being of the whales at the same time. This is what I feel like ecotourism should be, is supporting groups that care about the future of the animal that you're there to see. Yeah, let's go get tacos now. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, look at all that cheesy oh, goodness. Really yeah. Oh my god. So it has like a bunch of different types of cheeses, shrimp. The mojajetes are definitely delicious. We are camping on Playa El Tule, which is about halfway between San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas. And it is a free camping spot, which is really exciting. We've done lots of beach camping and boondocking in Baja, but all of it has been paid. This is our first real free spot, and it is gorgeous. It is a very popular beach for locals, so it is quite rowdy on the weekends. Last night there was music playing until all hours of the evening. <laughs> It calmed down for a little bit, probably around like 10 o'clock till 3 a.m. and then it was just a whole new party. So be prepared for that if you're coming here. There is also a lot of soft sand. We've seen a lot of people get stuck. Dennis fortunately had some traction stuff to get you out of a bind. It was another thing we bought to prepare ourselves for this big Baja road trip. But yeah, this is a fantastic beach. Today we're just kind of just chilling. Mom's getting some sun, did a nice little workout. Oh yeah, and we saw so many whales from the beach, which is awesome. A great spot. Not a fun experience. Dennis hasn't even had his coffee yet. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we at least got unstuck. It's not over yet. We have to continue to maneuver ourselves so that we can turn around because if we keep going on the path we're on, it's even more soft sand. Lots of help. The final straw that ended up really getting us out was someone's Jeep. They pulled us. That seems to be the magic trick. Luckily, there's tons of people on this beach and someone was passing by. Her original intention was to take my mom to the airport, but after this fiasco, we had to just call an Uber. Bye, mama. Bye. I love you. Luckily, they do have Ubers out here, so that's very convenient. She's off to the airport. Dennis is airing up the tires. And we are heading to the popular expat town of Los Bariles to meet up with our friends Alex and Haley. Supposedly the farmer's market in Los Bariles is the best in all of Baja. So we had to come. It's every Saturday from 9 to 12. And uh, it's massive. It's already like 10 times larger than anyone we've visited before. I found a little French bakery. They have the spot in Todos Santos, but they come here to sell their goods. We ended up getting a little pastry and a quiche to go. But the uh, pastry has matcha in it. Lots of powdered sugar, but it's not super, super sweet, which is nice. You want to go walk on? <laughs> nah, enjoy that. Oh, it's good. Enjoy that. <laughs> There's just so much diversity. There's bao buns, they have Argentinian food, we had a calzone, now we're getting some quesadilla. This stall looks fantastic. We have a huarache con pollo, and then we also got quesadilla, one of our favorites. Come hungry, because you'll want to spend all your money and come with quesos. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. <laughs> That to have traditional dancers, that is so cool. Hecho de mano tortillas from blue corn. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I think this is the winner. Both are so good, but this huarache, wow. We 
got bacon, lamb sausages, meatballs, and a whole chicken. It's all organic from her farm. This was such a great market. Really, really recommend. Now we have to go bring our groceries back to our V's and go on our next adventure. You guys are testing that scooter's limits. Uh, All part of the adventure. Oh. Hey, look at this. <laughs> we are here, safe and sound, all in one piece. It's so cute here. They have like an eco campo. They have all different types of animals. And I believe you can camp here, but I, I really only think the road would be suited for small vans. There are several cattle guards that are really narrow. 150 pesos gets you in to see the most amazing waterfall and oasis. Oh my gosh, <gasps> wow, that is amazing. Holy moly, oh my God, this is so cool. Can't wait to jump in that. Oh, it feels so good. No, this is cold. <laughs> wow. Look at where we're at! <laughs> this place is amazing. It is very refreshing. We are here in early April and it is starting to get warm. This is definitely the place to come to chill out for a day. There's also Santa Rita Hot Springs, a pool you can swim in as well. I've heard it's epic. I don't think we'll be going this trip, but. I think we lost Dennis. He went way up high on top of the rocks. He's been gone for like an hour. Team's ready to, to go or a little hungry. This man could adventure anywhere and just get lost for hours. We found him! He's here! We can go get margaritas and food. Up the stairs, earning that margarita. I went on a hike. I don't know about you. I already earned my margarita. Oh, please. Game to La Gaviota it has excellent reviews on Google, and it's this cute little taco shop just at the end of town. They have incredible margaritas. I ended up going with a Jamaica margarita. Mine is blended, and Dennis got his in the rocks. Ordered all the things. We have sashimi, we have aguachile, and we got tons of tacos for the table. I'm really hungry, and I'm feeling the, the margarita a little bit. Already? Oh for my sure. god! For sure, for sure. Alex is from Mexico. Obviously, native speaker is very helpful to have all of the corrections. We've asked him a zillion questions like, so how do you actually do this? If you want to know how to order food when you're in a restaurant, say, me da. That shows respect because you're using the usted form. And it means give me, which sounds really direct and kind of rude for like English translation, but it's not. That's just how they say it. And you'll sound like you know what you're doing. La una margarita de Jamaica. Okay. Um, Is there mustard? Yeah, I think mustard. mustard. It's not my favorite. Mm. 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 Go with the agua chile. Delicious. Wish you could smell the garlicky goodness that is at our table right now. It's time to pack up our camping spot in Buena Vista. We stayed at Baja Sunrise RV Park. They have full hookups with 50 amp electricity, dump, water, laundry, and hot showers. It was right on the water too with gorgeous sunsets. It was a bit spendy, but definitely worth it if you're looking for a park with amenities that's close to town. Luckily today's drive isn't too long, only about an hour and a half to head to La Ventana. Cheers. 
The drive was pretty uneventful other than a few cows and goats and washed out sections of the road. But we're here and our first stop is to try some fish tacos. Our friends came to Baja Bites and said the fish tacos were fantastic. So of course we have to give it a try for ourselves. I ended up going with fish and shrimp taco and Dennis got a machi taco and scallops as well as fish. Got it loaded up. There they are! Yay! What a spot! The sunset here is epic! The colors were explosive tonight. That really was something special. It's like cotton candy clouds in the sky. It's a calm day, which is kind of a rarity. Both Los Bariles and La Ventana are known for having higher winds. It's a very popular spot for kite surfing. It's 250 pesos per night to stay here. And it's quite beautiful. I'm very happy with that. Oh, he's letting us know. The birds have a nest nearby and they are not a fan of the cats being outside. This one just came right here to let us know. It's so nice to be able to take the cats out. There's so many stray dogs that are just constantly like off leash and it makes us nervous with the cats. You never know if they're gonna be friendly with them or not. Luckily, this spot doesn't have too many dogs. And even though it is Semana Santa, which is a very busy week for the beach here for Mexican nationals, it's still kind of sleepy right now. So we're taking advantage of it before the wind picks up, before the noise gets crazy and... Mana Santa is in full swing. Our neighbors are so sweet. They caught like 10 or 15 fish and they grilled one and gave us a whole fish to eat. Everywhere we've gone, people are so kind in Mexico. This is just a like testament to their kindness and welcomeness. We were like, oh, you're just gonna let us try. And he's like, no, 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 the whole fish. Amazing. This is amazing! Free hot springs like 10 minutes outside of town. Baja has this all along this coast. I was sick the first time we got to one. The second time, I think we just didn't go. But we finally made it. Yes. It's been worth the wait. Look at this! It's pretty banging. But the tide is coming in, so our time is gonna be very limited. Yes, yeah, so you wanna come like just before low tide as the tide's going out because the cool water is kind of what helps regulate the temperatures. and Everyone's building different pools with the rocks here to kind of make it warmer, colder to your liking. And it is a popular spot right now. Again, this is Samana Santa, so there's tons of people here, but... Wow. There's still plenty of room for everybody. Oh my gosh, this is lovely. What a way to end Samana Santa. Our lovely host went and purchased some fish today and we were out grilling. It's like just such a lovely evening on the beach. This has really been such a special week with them. Hopefully if you're coming here, I do suggest maybe finding some friends online or that you might know to, to travel here with because I really do think it, it will enhance your experience. Cheers to the friends we've met, Olet. Luckily, our time with Alex and Haley wasn't over yet. After dealing with an unexpected change in plans and issues with our RV, we drove back to the United States together as a caravan. Spot. 
seriously, this is gorgeous. We are about 30 minutes south of Loretto. We found this free camping spot. I don't even remember where I saw it, whether it was on someone's social media or if I just found it on iOverlander, but we are the only ones here and it's gorgeous. I literally woke up this morning and thought like, pinch me that this is where we're getting to camp. This is our backyard for as long as we want it to be. Thanks, Jeff, Alex. It's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. You've done this before. Yeah. I've learned from the best. We've been here. <laughs> I can't believe this. Homemade chilaquillas on the beach in Baja. You guys need to find friends that can cook. If you're gonna caravan with people, that should be like prerequisite. <laughs> As you're interviewing them to see if it's gonna work, you should be like, so how good are you at cooking and do you like cooking for others? You sound like such a snob right now. <laughs> we did not ask them that. They just happen to be amazing at cooking and often make us meals, which is lush. What do you think? Oh my gosh. We thought it was nerve-wracking driving south down the Baja California Peninsula. We're headed back north. Being on the cliffside changes things. These tour buses and semi-trucks drive so fast down these mountain windy roads and they're so narrow. There's barely a shoulder in most spots. I mean, we've heard of a lot of people like having their side mirrors hit by the semi-trucks in passing. Dennis drives with his side mirror in usually. You are amazing. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, gracias. <laughs> what are we going to do when they leave us? Another long drive day ahead of us, but we're heading to a really cool area. On our way south, we took the highway from Mexicali down to Guerrero Negro. This time we're going to be going up Highway 1. Should be very scenic and give us a whole new experience of the Baja Peninsula. This stretch of Highway 1 is notorious for being super remote. There are no services, no formal gas stations. So you need to come prepared as you drive through this area. There are a few locals that will sell gasoline like in jugs on the side of the road. So just keep an eye out for those signs. We'll have a pin in our RV to Baja guide as well, showing where you can get gas. But yeah, we are loving being out here in the desert in this remote area. It is absolutely breathtaking. There are a few things we're gonna be doing while we're here, mostly just taking in the vibes and having fun with our friends. But there's gonna be some cool cave paintings for checking out a little bit later. It is quite chilly here. Last night it got down to 47 degrees and we are here in early May. It's a stark, stark change from what we were just experiencing. Baja, you're crazy. The Catavina Desert may seem uninhabitable at first glance, but this landscape is home to hundreds of different plant and animal species, including the Cardone Cactus and Cedio Tree, which are endemic to Baja. The Cardone cactus can grow up to 80 feet tall, with this area having one of the highest concentrations of this special cacti in all of the world. Cirio, meaning candle, is a tree that's loosely related to the Ocotillo and reminded us of a scene from a Dr. Seuss book. These slow growing trees can take as long as 50 years to reach five feet in height. After that, they grow at a faster rate of one to two inches annually. These prickly giants average around 70 feet in height with the tallest ever recorded near Bahia de Los Angeles at 86 feet tall. 
This place is like another world. There are so many different types of cacti here. It is incredible. I think that these have been here for hundreds, if not thousands of years is mind boggling. The Caravina Desert is the ancestral homeland of the Kumeyaay people. This cave is one of many that can be found throughout the peninsula that preserves petroglyphs made by native peoples hundreds if not thousands of years ago. The vibrant colors in the paintings are made from plants, animals, and minerals in the local environment. And while no one knows exactly what these paintings mean, many believe they are messages for future generations. These petroglyphs are extremely well preserved here, but unfortunately there was graffiti nearby. This is a friendly reminder to always respect the areas you're visiting and never draw, paint, or etch in sacred places like this. Our journey continued north as we made our way from Caravina to the coastal farming city of San Quintin. We have made it to Cielito Lindo, which is a super old school restaurant that was built in like the 1950s and a bunch of famous actors and actresses used to come here in its heyday. And John Wayne. Jimmy Stewart. Henry Fonda. <laughs> They've got strong margaritas, delicious food. They're known for their crab, which speak of the devil. La Jaiba. But it's delicious. What did you do? I ate a sh lot of crab. <laughs> A lot. I ate a lot of crab. Fantastic. We had a blast last night. Honestly, we had a little too much fun. Those margaritas are no joke. Cuidado. We ended up chatting until 10 p.m. We closed the restaurant down. Luckily, since we were camping at the restaurant, we didn't have to walk far to go home. We've taken it super slow today after our fun evening. And as we we're heading out to go to our next destination, Alex and Haley's RV wouldn't start. Yeah. This is the second time they had trouble starting it. So don't know if it's dead battery. Dennis is jumping them right now. It's on! She started! Yay! We had no idea what we'd be waking up to after arriving last night in the dark. But we had a feeling it'd be beautiful. And we were right. This place is stunning. We were driving through vines for like probably 10, 15 minutes last night, had no idea. This whole place is just complete vineyards. It's breathtaking. This vineyard that we're camping at is called Vinos Dubucano. They haven't opened for tastings yet, but at June, 2023, they should be opening their tasting room. They're gonna have steaks, pizzas. They have a bunch of different wines. They've even won awards for some of them. You can camp here overnight. I think they're a part of the Harvest Host program, but they're letting anyone come as long as you kind of coordinate with them ahead of time. I definitely recommend it. It was safe, it was quiet, it's absolutely beautiful. We picked up a bottle of wine to go, and we are gonna continue on toward Ensenada. I dare say that this might be more beautiful than Valle de Guadalupe. I think it is. We've gotten closer to Ensenada and boy the roads have taken a turn. There's so much traffic. The drive took a lot longer. We stopped at a brewery on the opposite side of town that we probably wouldn't have visited if we weren't already heading this way. Cerveza Cardera, they have a nice tap list. I chose a stout that tastes like Carajillo, one of our favorite drinks from Mexico. They also have like a restaurant on site where they do wings, costilla, ribs, fries, kind of like bar food. So we're filling up on some food, trying some beers. Apparently this joint won best brewery in all of Mexico in 2022. I say it's home. Terribly unhealthy bar food, but very tasty. <laughs> 
we're about to leave Mexico, we wanna take advantage of the super affordable healthcare system here. We always purchase travel insurance whenever we're traveling out of the country, but Mexico's healthcare system is so affordable. Most of the time you don't even need it. It's really there if you get into a serious accident or something big happens. We are going to be going to the dentist today and instead of it costing anywhere from 75 to $120 for a cleaning out of pocket in the United States, it's going to cost us 35 US dollars. We went to the dentist last time when we were in Merida and so many of you guys asked what it was like. So we're gonna be showing you our doctor's visits over the next two days. Let's get these teeth cleaned. We're in Ensenada, which is kind of a border town. It's not as close as Tijuana, but it's like an hour and a half drive from San Diego. So a lot of people come down here to get dental work done. This office, everyone here, including the doctors, speak English. They gave us forms to fill out in English. The office is super swanky, just like any office you'd have in the United States. I can't speak to Canada, we haven't done the healthcare there. If you're worried about like not being able to communicate or anything like that, there's tons of options. And the care here is fantastic. In and out, 50 minutes with the paperwork. We do have a few cavities on our back molars, but they said they're small, not, nothing to worry about yet. In our last video, we had a lot of people ask us where we went. We went to Baja Dent. We'll have a link for the dentist down below. Now we're gonna go get food. <laughs> Wreck our clean team. Yeah. These salsas are no joke here. They're homemade. This lady is super, super famous. She's been in Anthony Bourdain and so many famous chefs from across Mexico and the United States, all over the world have come to eat here. It used to be just this little food cart in Ensenada and then she's become so famous and now she has her own restaurant here and she's expanded to one or two restaurants in Mexico City. Good for her. She could also buy her salsas. They had the Tigreta de mi suegro, which is the secret of my mother-in-law salsa and it is very spicy. I'm going to another doctor's office. I've been having some problems with my ears for really as long as I can remember. I don't hear very well, it's itching all the time, and I have trouble like clearing my ears. So I think something's going on. Probably it's clogged. I've been notoriously using Q-tips for many years. I've stopped, I've stopped, I know it's bad. So I'm coming to an ear, nose, throat doctor today in Ensenada who hopefully will help me get this sorted out. Dennis is extra excited because he says I never hear him. He thinks it's more selective hearing, but really, I don't hear him. This doctor doesn't speak English as fluently as the other one. Luckily, I do know some Spanish, but there's gonna be a lot of technical words I don't know today, so we'll see how this goes. The office is very nice here. This is cool, he has a TV, so he's going to check in my ears and I'll be able to see everything's happening. Yeah, yeah that was bad. <laughs> he's putting some baby oil in my ear. Whoa, this is crazy. I can hear so much better. Wow! Oh, I'm so happy I did this. So? Oh my God. Can you hear better? This year, the second he sucked it out, I instantly could tell a difference of quality of hearing. I think it was about $45 for this appointment. So worth it. If you've ever used Q-tips, you need to get these clean. I'm telling you what, <laughs> another great experience. Sweet. For going to the doctors in Mexico. I will say we cannot say that all of Mexico is going to have fantastic doctors. Just like anywhere in the world, you can't guarantee you're gonna have a positive experience. You can only speak to the doctors that we have visited in Mexico, but of course, do your own research on the doctors that you're gonna be visiting. Highly, highly recommend. We are staying at a beautiful RV park right on the water. It has full hookups and we have epic, epic views. It's also next door to Aguamala, which is one of the local breweries here. Ensenada is known for their breweries. They had fantastic food and great beers. Highly, highly recommend their baked oysters and their ceviche negro. Today is the day we return to the border. We're feeling all the feels. Sad to be leaving Mexico. We love this country. Sad to be leaving our friends. We've had the most amazing time. It's always hard to say goodbye. We have about a two hour drive from Valle de Guadalupe to meet the previous owners at the Banjercito. If you don't know why we're doing that, we'll link the video here. Let's do this. They say not to go through Tijuana because it's the busiest land border crossing in the world. Yeah, we're, we're understanding why now. The lines here are absolutely insane. The traffic is just going left and right. We need to make a left to go to the Banjercito, but we had to go to the commercial lane. So now we're going through this insane U-turn where there's just cars everywhere. It is madness. The tip has been canceled. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now we have to tackle the challenge of crossing the board. We have to find the right lane because it's super important if you don't have sentry, which is like the speed pass to get through the border. It's really important that you don't go in that lane. They have like thousands of dollars of fines and some people have even been jailed before for going in the wrong lane. We also don't have service right now because our Google Fi has shut that off since we've been out of the country for too long. Thanks Google. Thanks Google Fi. We have offline maps getting us there. We don't know if we're gonna be waiting for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, we'll see. We think we are in the right lane. Honestly, we aren't sure. We really, our fingers crossing that we are. We see a line up here that says, Acceso de Centri, and we are not on that road, so praying. <laughs> 14 minutes waiting, and I can see the border. This is moving pretty quick. I will say this is not a comfortable ride, so if you're in a larger RV, I highly recommend going to a different border crossing. This whole process of crossing is just so stressful. Thank you. It took us 42 minutes to get through the border crossing. It was super smooth. They didn't even really do an inspection of the RV. They just kind of peeked their head in. I am so glad we are done and through that. And for those wondering, the ready lane, which was confusing for us, it was fine with our US passports. They accepted that as being the RFID approved card to get you through. The fact that we're on the other side of the border and done with that craziness, I feel like such a, an immense feeling of relief right now. Joe Tambien. <laughs> How do these roads feel? It feels just as amazing as when we crossed into Texas the last time. <laughs> Buttery smooth, 